All right, welcome back. Last episode, we sprinted through four verses and finished all of chapter two, but today we're going to slow down a little bit and just work through the first two verses of chapter three. So let's get into it. Just by way of reminder, 2 Timothy is this book that is dealing with continuing the legacy of Paul. Paul is about to die, but before he dies, he's getting ready to pass off the legacy and ministry and mission to his son in the faith to Timothy. And Timothy is scared and he's burdened with this question of how. How am I ever going to do all of that? How am I going to train up the next generation and ensure that I pass off all that Paul has passed off to me to other people? And so in chapter 1, Paul begins answering these questions. And he commands Timothy to not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of me, of Paul, the messenger, but also don't be ashamed of the message of the gospel because there will be this grand and epic moment in the future when the crown is placed on Christ's head, when everything and everyone recognizes the king. The same king died in our place for our sins and was resurrected and conquered death, and that changes everything. Never be ashamed of that. And in chapter 2, Paul explains how to be strong and how to train up other leaders. There will be suffering, yes, but we will need to suffer well and remember Jesus Christ because we draw strength from him. And if we don't protect the church against false teachers, then we'll never be able to train up the next generation of leaders. And so there is this heavy and this serious responsibility of accurately handling God's word. Without that, you and I, we will never be useful for the, for, for the church or for God. And all this brings us to chapter 3. And just like in those first two two chapters, chapter 3 is answering this larger question of how. How do I continue the legacy of Paul? And maybe more specifically, Paul in chapter 3 is dealing with making sure that your ministry endures. Because look, you and I, right, we should want the church to be faithful in preaching the gospel and training men and women and everything else that God has called us to do but we should be faithful in that and ensure that that happens even after you and I die. That's the nature of a legacy. That our desire, just like Paul's desire, is to make sure that all of this continues beyond our lives, that it endures to the end, not just the end of our lives, but to the end of time. And so how do you, how do, you do that? How do you and I leave behind a legacy? And how do, you, how do you and I ensure that we have an enduring ministry? Chapter 3, verse 1. But you must know this. Paul says, if you want to ensure that everything good and godly continues within the church, then you and I are going to need to ingrain these verses in our brain. The church is being threatened. And in a real sense, the church is under attack. And that's why Paul says what he says right here, that in the last days, violent times will come. We know from verses like these right here, wherever Tommy is going to put them, that we are living in the last days, that we are anticipating the return of Jesus Christ. But as we wait for Christ to come back, our current era right here, right now, is filled with this right here, is filled with violent times. This word violent occurs only one other time in the entire Bible, and it occurs in Matthew 8. 28. And in Matthew 8, 28, you have Jesus. Here's Jesus. And Jesus is approached by two, do you remember, two men that are possessed by demons. And so we will give them crazy, angry eye- eyebrows. And these men have crazy strength. They are enraged and fanatic, the entire village is scared of these two guys because they're that intense and they're that dangerous. And if you got near these guys, then your life would be in serious risk. And in the same way, this word violent pops up again right here in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And is to say that in this last period, before Christ returns, it will be marked as an era that is crazy and intense and dangerous. And if you don't know that, then you will be in serious danger because you won't be able to prepare yourself rightly, to prepare yourself properly. This word violent, it's shocking and it's dramatic. It reminds you of Matthew 8, 28 of the demon-possessed guys. It's so dramatic and it really demands further explanation. And so in verse 2, Paul begins to explain and paint this picture of what things will look like in the end and therefore what we must be prepared for and what we need to be trained for and ready for and on God for. And so this is it. 
for men will be lovers of self. It's that there will be these people who are obsessed and they are consumed with themselves of, of feeding their flesh and their sinful desires. They elevate themselves and make themselves the center of the universe where everything just orbits around themselves. And not only that, but these guys are also lovers of of money, lovers of money. They are obsessed with money because they're obsessed with all the kinds of things that get burnt up in the end. All the stuff that Solomon says is vanity and meaninglessness and chasing after the wind, that's what these people chase after. They are also boastful, boastful in that they proudly lift up themselves above others and then look down upon and talk down to others. They are also arrogant, they're arrogant because they view themselves as better than everyone else. They are blasphemers because they use their words to hurt others and to curse God. And they're even this, disobedient to parents because they don't care about authority. They don't care about respect. Even the most basic structure within society, like the family that God has set in place, they spit on all of that. They are ungrateful ungrateful that there's zero thankfulness. There's no gratitude because they don't recognize God as the one who causes the sun to rise on even the evil people. And lastly for today, these people are unholy because they don't set themselves apart from sin. Instead, they run towards sin. They intertwine themselves with sin because they love offending God. And so Paul says, if you want to have an enduring ministry, a ministry that lasts even beyond your own lifetime, then you will need to be on guard and prepare for people that are just like this. All right, that was episode 69, and we have reading and question time with Tommy for you today. Uh, so read Romans 3, 10 through 18 uh, in that little section, Paul describes very similar people, and it can help to uh, flesh out what these people that Paul is talking about, the ungrateful, disobedient, awful people uh, that Paul is describing here. Uh, and then we have two questions for you. First one is, um, what do we do with these people? That's what Timothy was wondering. He, he was kind of at a loss. Um, so these, these ungrateful lovers of self do you witness to them? Do you stay away from them? What do you do? Uh, and then our second question is, how do you keep yourself from becoming one of them? What is the only thing that can keep you from becoming one of them? All right, that is our time for today. We'll see you back here tomorrow.